No, it is not the same. It's not the same. People are different. Everything is different. I mean, nowadays, I don't think people, you know, I don't think anyone knows what the smell of linseed oil is like. You know, what it's like to, uh, you know, to roll a bit of putty in your fingers. I mean, what did you used to do? Right? Apart from, uh, apart from giving a little Bobby Charlton a clip round the ear, you get the tape measure out, you? Come down the shop, get a piece of glass, hand a putty, a few nails, a piece of piece. But what do they do now? Eh? You get a man in the way. You watch him do it. You see, that's what it is nowadays. It's all looking and no feeling. You don't want to feel. I mean, that's too messy. That's for kids. Even, even the DIY lot. They're just as bad. They don't want to get their hands dirty, right? Bloke, bloke came in the shop the other day, right? And he said, I want some putty, right? And got some putty. I said, there's your putty. Oh, and you got it in a tube. Twit. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know all about it. Look, just shut up and listen, right? Look, straight up. It is a liquid, right? Even when it's hard, it is still a liquid. That's why it's transparent. See, look, look, when molten glass cools down, it doesn't crystallize. It just becomes a thicker liquid, right? It gets thicker and thicker until it's so stiff it seems like a solid. But it's not though, you see, because it never crystallizes. It is still a liquid. All right, all right. What about when you cut a piece of glass, right, and the edge is razor sharp, right, sharper than the other edges, right? Now you leave that for a couple of weeks, right, and that edge is the same as the others. See, it's still sharp, but it's blunter than it was. See, it's changed. It's changed just sitting there. See, your trouble is, you want everything, you want everything to be stable, reliable. But you see, nothing is stable. See, the, the world, the world is changing all the time. Everything. I mean, did you hear what Gorbachev said the other week? Right? As the ancient Greeks say, this is Gorbachev. As the ancient Greeks say, everything flows, everything changes. See, there you go, that's Glasnost. <laughs>
palate. Fishy about cutlet, don't they? They give it to budgies. Soda and lime. Oh, cheers. Right, now silica. Well, that's basically sand. And that, that is actually the main ingredient. And they add the soda to reduce the melting point when they heat it up. See, the soda is, is the, um, it's like a sort of flux. It solders it, sorry, it solders it together. The soda, like the soda, solder. That's the way, remember that. Um, you can actually make glass with just silica and soda. See, that wouldn't be a lot of good because it's, um, it's water soluble. And that's where your line comes in. That's to stop it all dissolving. And, uh, well, that is base. That's it. Soda. Oh yeah. Uh, I forgot this. The, this is the green bit. I also chuck some recycled waste glass in as another ingredient, and uh, that's for actually that is called cullet, and that is for reducing the melting point as well. James the First. It's right up my arse, that bloke. It was the Romans, you know, that uh, first brought glass making to Britain. And uh, up until the 17th century, most of it was made in a forest. You see, the glass makers, they, they needed the wood for their furnaces. And when, when they'd used all the wood up in one place, they used to move on to somewhere else, because they needed loads of it, tons of wood. Anyway, in 1615, the king, that's James I, he started getting you know, fed up because of the way that all his forests were disappearing so quickly. So, what he did was he banned the glassmakers from burning wood in their furnaces. And, uh, actually, do you know, the amount of rainforest they chopped down last year was as big as Austria, 
Switzerland, Denmark and Germany put together. That's a fact. at the world now, it seems a long way away. I mean, it never used to. I don't know what it is, it's like, um, it's like, like I can't get close to it. It's like there's something in the way. Can I explain it? Um, oh, it's like a museum. Uh, you, know, you can see things, but you can't touch them. Also, there's, there's like too much of it as well, like too many exhibits. I mean, you can't look at one thing properly because you're, you're always thinking about what's in the next room all the time. Sometimes I think I can feel something and then I realise it's, it's a memory. It's a memory that I'm feeling. I'm remembering a feeling I've had before.
See, they're decorating. I mean, it don't seem a lot of point, really, with the motorway coming. They have to be out before they've unpacked. Still, I hope they're better than the last lot. That used to be green. The number 17 was black and cream. Number 19 was brown. Mrs. Ferris had a cherry tree in her garden. It's all gradual. Lots of little things. And they don't seem much at the time, but when you look round, it's all different. Everything. Nothing stands still. It's just some things you see and some you don't. You know when you look at your watch, like really hard, you can see the minute hand moving? Well, how hard can you look? I mean, do you think you could train yourself? I mean, have you really pushed yourself? Do you think you could see the hour hand move? I mean, I, I suppose it depends on distance. I mean, you look at Big Ben and the hands are moving at the same speed as your watch. But if, like, if you got really close, really close, right up there on the clock face, they'd, they'd, re they'd actually be moving quite fast. I mean, scale, innit? I mean, the bigger something is, or the closer in you are to it, the faster it appears to move. It's like if we were really little, like a thousandth of an inch high, we could go and sit in the garden look up at the grass and actually see it growing. It's like, like the glass in that window, see? We think it's set, but how do we know? I mean, it's still a liquid. It might still be moving, trickling down, just too slow to see. Mrs. Thatcher says inflation's too high at 7.6%. In America, Wall Street has its second biggest fall in history. After 25 years, Mrs. Asulu waits for her jailed husband. Did you enjoy that? Not bad, was it? And Moscow admits it can't stop the killing in Armenia. Well, I don't. I've, Good evening. I've seen this. The Prime Minister has admitted on, that on inflation is too yeah, high. It, it rose to 7.6% today. Anyway, um, before he had the moped, I used to stand there and wait for him to come home from work. Especially Friday nights, that's um, Rin Tin Tin night. He'd bring me home some sweets. And uh, I knew he had the sweets, but... Uh, but before he'd get them out, we'd have to go through this little routine. He'd come in, and then he'd stand there, and uh, he'd rustle the packet in his raincoat pocket. And I'd have to say, before I got the sweets, what's that going papery, papery? So it's ironic that as enterprise and liberty rise from the dead ashes...
Right, so where did we get up to? I think it was James the first, wasn't it? <coughs> James the first. Now, the coal burning furnace had just been invented. So when the glass makers got slung out the forest, they went over to burning coal instead of wood. And this, this, this is actually the start of proper, you know, factories. And by the end of the 18th century, most glass was made in glass house cones. And these were like giant chimneys that the glass makers all worked inside. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine this, but you know, it was like a big circular furnace right, in the middle of the cone with all the glass makers working around it in teams. Now, this was, uh, this was all blowing because they used to blow glass to make nearly everything at that time even uh, flat window glass and that that the name for that is crown glass I, I, it's a good one actually i'll tell you how they made crown glass what i used to do was they blow a big bubble about two foot across they'd open it up at the end right and spin it in front of the furnace on the end of an iron rod called a pontil or a punty now, when it got hot enough, the centrifugal force made the bubble spread out into a flat disc. <laughs> the problem with all this was is, is that the biggest disc they could make was about four foot across. And they couldn't use the middle bit because it had this bulge in it in the middle where it had been attached to the punter. So, like the biggest square of a, a flat glass they could make was about, I don't know, something in the region of like 18 inches or so. And of course, the bigger your square was, the more waste you had. So, like, windows at the time were made up of lots of little panes. And, and, and the, the lumpy bit in the middle, the bullion, well, they didn't used to want that, they just used to throw it away or sell it off cheap. Because nowadays, that's the bit that everybody wants, isn't it? I mean, actually now, they just make fake ones. And even they cost a packet.
Footballed. Footballed. He's footballed crazy. He's footballed mad. It's all the same to me. Gloriori, Gloriol, Gloriol. G L O R Y, Gloriol. Gloriol. Glory hole. Just looked at today's friggers. I see punty woods are going down again. Oh dear. Now what was that word? My brain's going, you know. I had it a minute ago. What was it? I know, I know what it was. Friggers. That's it, friggers. See, when it got to the end of the week, lots of the factories used to let the glass makers make things of their own out of all the glass that was left over. And they were called friggers. All sorts of stuff they used to make, like um, model ships, animals, tobacco pipes, uh, rolling pins. Bibles, bells, hats, guns, walking sticks, musical instruments. And in some places, they had these Sunday parades where the glassmakers used to take their friggers on a pub crawl. And the people in the pubs used to have a vote and decide which one was best. And the friggers that won got produced by the factories. <laughs> it all sounds a bit cosy though, doesn't it? I mean, can you imagine that now? I mean, like you work all week in a sweltering factory and what do you do on the weekend? You go in again, unpaid, on a Saturday, Spend half a Sunday showing people what you made on Saturday. And then if you're really lucky, the factory goes and nicks your idea and makes loads of money out of it. Thank you very much. Still, my past is, is a bit like that. Cozy. I suppose history is the same. It cuts all the tricky bits out, simplifies everything. Mind you. It is more complicated now. I mean, you can't get to the roots of things, see how they work. Systems, machines, 
and no one can fix my video. See, at, at least the glass makers knew what they were doing, what it was for, to see what was going on. But it's not just that, it's not just that though. It's a mixture of that and all the stuff you know. You know, all the useless bits and pieces filling up your brain. I mean, my brain's full, but it's full of stuff I don't want. And most of the stuff I do want won't friggin' stay there. What's happening now sort of half gets in, but not far enough to make it real. It's the past that's real, clear. I can still feel the past, in books or in memories. I've got some great memories. Cosy. Unless they're just Ovaltine adverts. Any other bright ideas? <laughs> Only for a couple of minutes. You blew in and blew out again. I don't think you liked it, Mother. Did you get some sort of queer feeling about it? No, darling. What makes you think that? You know how one sometimes feels about a house. As if it was being sort of secretly hostile. Did you feel that about it? No. But I wondered if you did. Well, if it had been anything clairvoyant about Mummy, we'd have sent her out to cash in on it long ago. Where is this studio, anyway? Yeoman's Place. Oh, it's right there. You never get rid of your children, do you, darling? No. Who there? They marry and set up house a few yards away. I shan't come round every afternoon with my knitting, anyhow. When Thea was a little girl, she used to say that when she married, she'd build a house next door with a big tunnel between. And that's just about what she's done, except for the tunnel. Yeah, she got that idea from me. I had it first when I was about five. How about that film, Louise? Well, I wonder if I ought oh, to... come on. But I have such a lot to do. What? Preparing for this date we have in church. Should I wear black knees, Bessie? No, I shouldn't. They always stink. <laughs> but Bessie was nervous. I wore long white suede gloves if they were agony. They might have been glued on. <laughs> come on, Louise. I don't think I will come to a film, Roy. Oh, why not? I've a hundred things to do. Can I help you with anything, darling? Any packing? No, I'm only taking one suitcase down to Cornwall. I shall leave the rest of my things here, if I may, until we come back to town. Well, you should be staying here anyhow for a little until your trunk's ready. I... Thought we'd go to a hotel, Mother. Why? There's plenty of room here. I know, darling, but... Roy thinks his father mightn't like it much. Look at these windows. You can open them. Stick your head out. Sashes. Casements, too. They're all lovely. Now you look down the street. What have they got now? Picture windows. <laughs> They're just pictures, that's all they are. They don't open, don't do anything. Okay, they've got these little fan lights, louvers, but they're a waste of time, you can't get a fart through them. Like prison bars, you've got to stand on a chair to get in the air. Down on ground level, we're all sealed in, looking at the world like we look at the telly. As if that's not good enough, they all want bloody double glazing. UPVC. You can have it, mate.